This interview is being taken by John Cyrillic Sr., veteran of World War II, South Pacific. John, you got to tell us your story? Oh, this is being recorded as of November 30th, 2020. John, go ahead and tell us your story. My story. World War II. I'll go World War II. I got my first letter from the government. My number was 3104042. And they made sure that we remember that number forever. That was the most important thing in the Army. Why was it an important number to remember? And that, that's my, that was that way, I don't know. They made us do that all the time. Okay. They always ask us our number. Okay. <clears throat> so I got my first letter. For you must have passed your uh, your hometown physical first. So I got my first letter from the government to report to the certain hall the on a Thursday. The doctors them days, my days, they had Thursdays off. So on a Thursday, we met at a hall at the hall. They let us use the hall. They had seven doctors, and each doctor had his own post. You had to go from the first doctor all around to the seventh doctor. Well, the, 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 all the soldiers that were with me, we all passed, as far as we knew. Because we got another letter to report to the Army Physical in Hartford. So we all, we all, we all met at the YMCA that morning, and a bus picked us up and took us to Hartford. And we went to another physical, all always around, in the same way. And got into the last doctor, he said, Now you belong to the Army, you can't join any other branch. At that time, you only had the three branches, Army, Navy, or Marines. So, we call a, that, that we had a wait. We waited, it was a holiday, the army wasn't drafting anything. Well, I was going in for one year. That's what this was. But it was the month of December, holidays, nobody was drafted until January. That's the time I was drafted for in one year. So I had to re army, another bus took us to Hartford to the army there where the army had a physical, we had the physical there, and that's what he did. The last doctor says, now you can join any other branch because you belong to the army. So that was okay. We all passed as far as we know. Then we waited for another letter in January I got. This is where I was already 23 years old in January. So I got another letter, we had a report down at YMCA, and the bus was outside. We all went on a bus, we, and he took us to the railroad station, where we all went aboard the train, and we went to Hartford, picked up more troops. Then we went to Fort, uh, Massachusetts, to the army there. What Fort was, Devens? Fort Devens in Massachusetts. We got there and they gave us the, our clothes from World War One. <laughs> I had all World War One clothes and the rifles and everything. Now, were you still going in for just twelve months? Or did, huh? the, did something did something happen that made you change from being in the service for twelve months? You were in the going in for twelve months. What happened? I wasn't in there twelve months. No. No, but when you first got drafted, you thought you were going to serve one year. Oh, yeah, we we're going in just for one year. And what happened? What happened? We passed the Army Physical December 5th, 1942, and a war broke out on, on, on December 7th, and there goes my one year, one year Army service. So we waited, I waited, and we get another letter the report to the YMCA and to going to go into the army for they didn't tell us for how long so we went to Fort Devens Massachusetts 
but we, we, we save our clothes. World War One clothes we had, <laughs> what was left over, that's what they gave us. So we were there a couple of days, and they put us on a train, and off they took us, went off. We went, we didn't know where we were going, but we got into Fort Bragg, North Carolina, for training on there. So we've been there for, they had 13 weeks training at that, at that time, but we were the first cycle that had only 10 weeks training, and they put us back on a train and shipped us to Fort, uh, Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. And we had a, they had all a roll call. The first four soldiers they called, they said, you going into that barrack where I was and where I did told them, and you, I didn't stay with anybody else. The, all four of us there. And then I went down to the kitchen to ask him for something to eat. I said, we didn't eat no breakfast, no nothing. So he gave us our lunch. And the other boys come in from the field. They're training on their 105 Howard. It's an old American one, a French one. They're old, old ones. We had a brand new one in Fort, De Fort Bragg, a, a French one that I knew how to handle. And we only had that one. So we all practiced on that one brand new one was a different kind of artillery of 105. So we we stayed there. We stayed there for a while. Before I know, we got our new post office, APO, New York. That was our new address. And a little another day, a couple of days after that, we got another one, say APO, San Francisco. We, we got that. So a few days later, we all went aboard a, um, aboard a, a train, and we went to San Francisco down there. We, we stayed there. The whole division was there. We got there. We got those five ships come in, and the bar and the deck. We all went aboard the ship. Our, my company was pretty lucky. We had the deck on top. First bedroom, I was right on top. <clears throat> we got out the door, we're on the first deck of the ship. We're okay. So the five ships took off about by 12 o'clock noon, I guess it was. We went, we didn't know where we were going, but we all went. I don't know, don't remember how many days we were on board the ship. But there was 5,000 troops on that one ship. And as we went along, we, we crossed the equator, two ships went to the right, and that's where we found out that they gave us the literature that them ships, the two ships, met other army ships there going to Su uh, Fiji, Suva, Fiji. And we, the Suva Fiji is a little town, is a little country. And the three of us went to uh, Auckland, New Zealand. We went there, we met, they met, we stayed there, they unloaded the ships, and we stayed there for a whole month. So they left one ship back that they had to un we load the stuff to one ship, and, and he, we all had to go in back to Fiji. It went up and back, that one ship, until uh, transport all the soldiers from New Zealand to the Fiji Island. And that was one of our bases for a time being, all jungle fighting, where we found out we were short. You have to have water. There's no water up there. So we had to get more water. Uh, they made a beachhead after the Japanese built a fighter strip. When they got the fighter strip built, that's when the Army and the, and the Marines made a beachhead into the thing to save the thing. Because our, our fighters could go only from Fiji to Guadalcanal, but they couldn't get back, could ran out of oil, fuel oil. 
But after the Japs had the airport stripped, we, <coughs> we uh, got the airport, we got uh, stripped. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, was Fiji the first island you went to? The first island, we went to Auckland, New Zealand, okay. then the Fiji Island, okay. where we got all our training after the Japanese built the airstrip for our fighters to come in. <clears throat> well, the Japanese didn't build the airstrip, didn't the Americans build the airstrip? No, the, the, they built a strip for the fighters to come oh, in. Oh, the Japanese, so you took over their airstrip? Yeah, that, oh. that, that's what we're waiting for, for them to get it built up. So we all, had, we went up there the first day, we, I landed there, a Japanese came and it was a bomber, <laughs> with the bombs. But we all ducked, they dropped a bomb some other place, not where we were. We had a, I was stuck on details on the beach, clean the beach. We had to clean the beach as fast as we could, take everything off the beach and hide it so the Japs wouldn't see it. So after all... Oh, so they didn't know you were there? Huh? They didn't know you were there? The Japanese didn't know you were there because you took everything off the beach? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, we, they knew that we, we come in. Uh -huh. The Marines and the Army made the beachhead uh, first. And we, I call that, uh, we stay there. We stay in Guadalcanal. And that's where we found out how to fight jungle fighting. It was not that good. So this one ship come in and unload another one down the ropes we went and had to climb on on barges and that it took us in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we stayed in Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal today is a was a base station. Everything came to Guadalcanal. All the ships come in with supplies that came there. So that's where you took your training, was on Guadalcanal? Yeah, we took our training on Guadalcanal. And then from there, where did you go? From there, we went to, Bo uh, what's that, <laughs> another island. Bougainville? We went, huh? Bougainville. Bougainville, yeah. First, we had to, had to clean up seven islands before we went to another island. Every time we clean up an island, we went back to Guadalcanal for new equipment and the rest. And another week we go get to another island. When we clean all that out, we went back to Guadalcanal again. That was our base in Guadalcanal for new clothes and the guns and ammunition. Until we got all seven islands all clear up. And we from there we stayed there. We went to Bougainville. Board the ships a whole about five ships were in the bay. We all went aboard that. We went to on the way, we didn't know where we were going, but then they told us we were going to Bougainville in another jungle, all woods. So we all got there, off on the ropes, down the rope ladder, we climbed in, and we went in there, and that's where we found out we had to have more water. Water was a big problem. You could go without eating, but you couldn't go without water because it was so hot out there. And so we we stayed at at the uh, island for a long time. Thirteen months we we lived on there. I spent two birthdays there. So then the ships come in, a bunch of ships come in, and we're back on the ropes. I'm glad to climb the <laughs> on a rope ladders on board the ships, and off we went. We didn't know where we were going, but we were going to Philippines. That's where we we're on our way to the Philippines. But before we got there, they split our outfit on two. Sh we were on two ships. I was on one ship, and the other part was on another ship. So they didn't want to lose all our troops. So I, we got into the Philippines. They, uh, they, they unloaded the first guys, first ship of our. I was still aboard the ship on the second ship. I didn't go and get, I didn't hit the, 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 down the fill up there. So, uh, 
And that's, uh, I didn't get there the second day I got off the ship. Had to find my alpha. They were three miles already inland. We had to look for them. So slow by slow, we I found this one of our trucks going by. We waved him down and he took us back to the outfit. That's how we got back to the outfit of this for the second day. Uh, let's see. It took us some quite a while to get down into Manila. We were there. Yeah, it took us a little while to get to Manila on our way. We're on a main highway. We we're lucky. We had tractors and we instead of trucks, to, you could hear them coming down a long ways. And at that time, I was a machine gunner. I had to go way out in the front of the field, make a perimeter until the outfit came in. With the four companies, we all our machine gunners were out there. So when they got there, then we moved along. We moved pretty good, pretty fast until we got Manila. When they got into Manila, they cleaned that all up. I didn't see any enemies at all, nothing. But we had, we were doing a lot of firing there uh, on the island. When it was all quiet, we had to turn around and we only uh, reached a half of Philippines. We got it. We had another half to go to our Paris. So off we went. We were going back the other way, going for our Paris. We we're in the woods. There's only one road to go that way. We we're on a, on a road there. The, the captain got up one morning and told us. That's when the, it was all over, they gave up. So, so I only had 85 points. Who had 86 points were the first ones on the first ship that was there. They went all aboard the first ship, had 86 points and more, because they're all national. I was with the National Guards from Ohio. And they all went home. The only army we had was the National Guards, nothing else. And they they all went home. I had to wait for another ship to come in for some time. Well, what other islands did you go to? Huh? What other islands did you want? You were you were in the Philippines and you were Fiji, but in Bogoville, what other islands did you go to? Where was it that your brother the, came to see you? That, Oh, that was well, Bougainville, Philip. Uh, Eddie saw me in Philippines. We were on that island. Uh, we were there for 13 months. Oh, and what, how did that happen? How did your brother find you? Do you remember? Yeah. Well, he said he went to the Red Cross. He knew I was there, but he went to the Red Cross. Did you know he was there? No, I didn't know. Okay. I didn't know at all. My brother come up, yeah. He come up, and he, when they say him coming up to the, on the trail, they knew he was my brother. So I got up, they told him I was up there in the tent sleeping. Because I was on duty all night, so I had daytime sleeping. And everybody came up into the, uh, to the tent. I couldn't believe it when he woke me up that, <clears throat> that he was on the island. Yeah. So, was that the only time you saw him? Or did you get no, he was with us all the time. He was an engineer, yeah. Uh, yeah, and the guys know him. He, he had a 21-ton bulldozer. He was an engineer, and he lost two of them in the end of water. He didn't make it, and he didn't make no roads at all. He was supposed to make the roads and nothing doing. He lost he, the bulldozer. He lost that bulldozer. I saw one, but I didn't see the last one. But the Navy had to come and get that one out because their boats were hitting the, the thing and smashing up. Where did he lose them? In the water. In the water? In the bomb hole. He ran into a oh. bomb hole. He couldn't, the, the, the ship couldn't bring him in and he couldn't get off. So the top water went up and drowned the thing. So what did you do when, um, when the war was going on? Did you have to shoot the, the big gun or anything? Yeah, we had the, I was a number two man loading that 105 Howard, sir. Yeah, they gave me the bullet that was that one there. That was that shell. 
That was weighs forty two pounds. It does. Yeah. And now, how far were you up at the front lines, or were you, did you shoot the gun from from far back? Far back. Yeah. From far, far back. Yeah. But uh, I volunteer twice. They need help on one of the islands, so they wanted some help out there. So, so they needed a volunteer and a one hundred five. One man from each outfit, they only want. Oh, okay. That's about all. So the truck driver knew where we had to go. Okay. He got the guy and then the Navy picked us up, took us from one island to the other island. And that's and he took us all the way down the front line. We got in the front line. I hollered to the infantry, artillery's ready to fire. And they said, Holy a fire, we didn't have to fire that time. But then as I looked around, I told the guy, I said, don't move. I said, look, all the landmines, the whole thing, how lucky we were. They're all, the, I said, don't move. Look, all the landmines are here. So, so. Did someone come in to remove the landmines so you could leave? Huh? Did someone come and take the landmines out? No, How did no. you get out there? We just backed up and got the gun. The truck come up. We hooked the gun up on our truck, and off we went back. Uh, coming back. Wow. But we had a. The navy wouldn't take it. We got back to the shore, but it was five o'clock. The navy stopped. There no navy on the water, and we couldn't go up. We. We were stuck on that, on that one island, the whole, uh, quite a few soldiers were there, had to sleep on the ground till the next morning we had to wait for the Navy to pick us up and bring us from one island to the other. Whatever island we were on, we were off. But uh, every night at, at, at five o'clock, they all stopped. Nothing moved. If you moved, you was gone, yeah. That's how the Japanese could see you? Yeah, they didn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't see me, no. So when you, you went from island to island to clean up after the sh uh, after the shells were shot and everything? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We went out there. Uh, and you brought something home from the war, right? Yeah. Is this what you, is this what That's, you used yeah, to pick yeah, up? Yeah, and the bullet was on top. They come like that bullet by itself. And this one here, it was fired on my birthday. Just we only fired three rounds that day, so we had a fellow do that, and we it's had that. Time. Yeah, we had that. That was on my birthday. Only three rounds we fired that day. And that that shell is engraved with what? What's on there? Uh, all the gun crew. my my gun crew. Your gun. Crew. My gun crew. We had we had four guns. Mm -hmm. We have four guns in there. That was the third gun. Yeah, the third gun. I went into that uh, that crew with that crew and worked. And how did you get that home? Well, I got home. Well, we had 86. Another ship come in, and I had 86 points. So I they took the prairies where they, they landed. All right. So did, did you have to hide that? Oh, I had it. Nobody saw that. I had that all wrapped up. I had the casing for it. I didn't know what the casing is. And uh, I, uh, I used to knock the bottom off. That like, yeah, knock it off of the, the cap that set it off. Uh -huh. And but what was your nickname? My nickname right here was Porky. We all had a nickname in the service. And if you didn't know him, you call him Joe. Everybody was uh, called Joe. You see a soldier, Joe, Joe, that's all we knew. Everybody was a Joe in there. But you were named Porky, how come? Why did they name you Porky, do you know? <laughs> no, I didn't just name you Porky. <laughs> because of your, was it your cheeks? Because your cheeks were nice and round? Well, at that time, I was, must have been pretty fat, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the whole thing, but that there, I... I had, I went to the post office, he said, make sure it's not a, anything exploded. I said, no, no, no. My kind of come home, my mother holler. I don't want it to get thrown away. <laughs> they didn't know that I was coming. I got rid of it. I said, that's the only thing we ever carry. 
Uh, that there, yeah. or oh, had a Japanese bear in there, yeah, yeah. So you didn't really see any one-on-one um, -on -one fighting because you, your gun was so big, you were able to be back away from the front line. Oh right? yeah, oh yeah. The, we could back. We could fire seven miles, oh, full okay. charge of two uh, of seven bags. Well, that's nice. We just held how many bags to fire one. They're all by the sound. You had to cut them off and throw the powder away. And then after you guys got done, you had to clean up all those empty shells? Yeah, them? yeah. They all, there's no waste. They picked everything up. That was the ammunition crew. They had the trouble and bring the ammunition and pick up all the shells on there. They, no waste. They never, that stuff never came back to the United States. Now you said that they gave you um, new clothing. Was it World War One clothing again, or was it World War Two clothing? World War One clothes first. And then when they when they gave you more clothing, was it newer clothes? Oh, new clothes took some time because they only only thing they had was World War One clothes, and the guns were in the Cosmoline here, and clean it up, <laughs> and you had to remember the number of the gun. And your number, that three one zero four zero four zero two, they they keep asking, officers keep asking you your number all the time. And yeah. How did you clean your clothes when you were on the island? They did. Did they have washing machines? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I boiled my clothes there on, in Bogan and Guadalcanal. I got a picture of boiling my clothes, but that's about all. But. Every every time you go to the, uh, come back from the action, like the seven uh, in, in Guadalcanal, the the seven islands, you come back, you got all the clothes you want. Oh. But why well, didn't they have? But after they had new clothes and new everything, you know. Then when you went to the next island, the same thing. Always come back to Guadalcanal. And how was the food? Did the you guys food, get enough food? You had food. Uh, all can. Everything was canned stuff. Uh, like there was no food at all. Did, were you able to have meat and stuff? Did they get you meat and some meat? Yeah, they had a lot of spam come in. Yeah, yeah. And what did you have? Did you have good cooks? We had, yeah, we had real good cooks. But later on, one cook got drunk and he threw him out of the kitchen, and that's where I went into the kitchen. For I, the last seven months, I was a cook, and in there, and I took the spam, I baked it, and it was good. Regular ham, and uh, you had to find out how many you had. Over a hundred men, you had to know when you cut so much, you had to have one for each slice for each one and four officers. <laughs> so, so you got to eat well then, because you were in the kitchen. I wasn't in the kitchen. No, I didn't eat no well. My aunt, my, my crew said, oh, hey, don't forget me. When they went out, I made sure they had nice and warm coffee. Because I called one out, out there was always rain, every day rain. And they're out, we were out in the woods they were. But then when I got in the kitchen, I knew how bad it was out there. You'd have drinking uh, pineapple juice and it was cold and raining. So I said, not my, not me. I made coffee for them all. We had good truck drivers. They already found plenty of coffee, milk, and sugar. So at least we had, that's the only thing we had enough of that. So uh, it was okay. So Four, being in the South Pacific, did you see troops from other countries? No, I see nobody. nobody. No, I didn't no. see. Nobody, no, we just our own, no. I don't know that they were. A New Zealand troops were somewhere, Australians, but I didn't see them. Some of the guys saw them. I didn't see them. Did you, did the military give you anything for malaria? Did you have any problems? Oh, we had to have a nice, uh, uh, we had a pen, a pill, uh, Adderbin. Every day we had to have one Adderbin. That was for malaria and all. Did everybody take it? Yeah, I better take it. Uh, I guess I was sick once on that. Uh, the guys got sick. No matter what you do, you got sick anyway. So you got malaria even though you were taking the pills. You still oh, got yeah. malaria. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. I came home. I had it three times home, 
when I got back home. I had to have a doctor and have some pills like that, yeah. Somebody said you were a barber? I was a barber there for a while, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was on Bougainville, yeah. There's a, there, you're a barber today. <laughs> you got paid to be a barber? No, we never took any money because we had no place to spend it. Yeah, only a quarter was for the haircut, but we never took the money because we had no way to spend anything. There was nothing but jungles, nobody around there. So we never expect the money from anybody, just cut the hair, that's all. Nobody traded cigarettes? Well, I got cigarettes, yeah, I just put them on a table. And somebody, if I smoked, somebody holler, hey. <coughs> Somebody smoked and not supposed to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so you never smoked? I never smoked, no, no. When you were on the islands, did they ever have any issues with planes coming in, taking off, crashing? Airplanes? Yeah. Fighter oh. jets? <clears throat> oh yeah, we were out on detail and uh, and uh, two planes come in from New Zealand, two, two New Zealand sort. Air, uh, airplanes come in from different directions. They didn't know they were coming in. From different directions? Different direction, and they smashed right up over our heads. They come right down. One of them cut the tail off, and he comes down. The both of them got killed, young fellows, at two pilots, and lost the plane, yeah. Right above our head, they come in. Now, did you ever get into an airplane? I was a soldier of the week. <laughs> So they gave us a ride in the airplane to see the area that we we bomb, bomb, bomb with our guns. And what did that look like up, from up there? Well, you didn't see, you saw the outside, you saw all, everything clear up. The woods of the pineapple, the trees, coconut trees, banana trees were all cut down. Oh my. Yeah. Was that the only time you were in an airplane? That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Every week somebody was a soldier of the week. Really? Yeah. Must have been good cooking. <laughs> Some guys got sick on the airplane. They had to clean the airplane up after they got sick. Oh sure. my. I was pretty lucky. Yeah, let's see. So when, where, where, what island were you on when the war ended? I was in Manila, Philippines. You were in the Philippines? We were in the Philippines. Half a ways up the prairie. We were going everywhere we in the woods. Way off the main road, uh, up there, higher. And how did you get home? We, we went, the trucks took us to uh, the ship, to, to the ship, the second ship come in. Mm -hmm. Our prairie, then it was a clear road going to prairie. And we went to our prairie. And we came home, and we came home straight because it was all clear. The first ship had to go zigzag. But we came home with the lights on. The whole ship was lit yeah. up. So we're lucky, but when we're coming home, he wanted to, our captain wanted to go to California. But he told him, there's no room for you. You gotta go to Washington State. We had to go up there, but he said, we didn't have no summer or winter clothes. Cause we only had summer clothes on. And he knew that. So, but still we had to, we had to go to Washington. We went up. Uh, we we stayed on the water till he found the the uh, the, the, ch the chief engineer to come up the river Columbia River. We came up. He got there in the morning. And they gave us jackets to keep warm. Give us something to eat. We stayed there two days. They sort us out. New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. We with on a train. That's how we come back on a train to back to Massachusetts, and we had, and that's where we got our new clothes. All in Massachusetts, new clothes, have all that stuff, the uniforms and all that in Massachusetts. Did you get new shoes too? Everything. Yeah. I have seven pairs of shoes. <laughs> when you were on the ship coming back, where did you end up sleeping? Sleeping? Yeah. We ship. used to sleep outside on a deck. Never slept inside. No time, it was too, too hot to sleep in there. We, we slept outside on the deck. What did you do to kill time? Play cards or Nothing. sing? No, <laughs> no we just got in line. There was uh, get in line for 
You had breakfast, you went around, got a little line for supper. We had two meals a day. That's so all we got was two meals a day out of ship, yeah. And there's 5,000 people on that ship? The first ship we had 5,000 with everybody. Cool. Navy and that, the troops and all like that, there, 5,000, yeah. What about all the equipment? It was all on board the ship. It was on board the ship, It was too. all aboard, yeah. But we didn't, we didn't have anything. Uh, uh, our gun got, the gun crew I was on, the train had an accident or something, so our gun was no good. I we didn't say our gun till we got into New Zealand because they had a new gun. What was the name? What was the uh, name of your battalion? What was what was the group that you were with? Uh, I was training with the 137 Field Artillery from o National Guards from Ohio, Alliance Ohio. That's where the last, they were the National Guard. That's all they had when I got in was the National Guard. They didn't have no army. They had a couple of army guys. We had an army guy, but that's all it was. The, the National Guards, yeah, it was Army, Navy, and Marines. That's all they had in the first part of the war. Was it 137 or 135? 135. C battalion. C battery, yeah. Battery. 135 artillery, yeah. Yeah. So after you got out of the service, do you, did you go to reunions to see the people from I the made, battalion? I made two trips. We made two trips to uh, Ohio, Alliance, Ohio. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. yeah. Twice we were to uh, go see them. They had the meeting, yeah. yeah. That's about all, yeah. But they're all gone now. Yeah. And how old are you now? Huh? How old are you right now? I'm 101 years old. I'm going to be 102 in December 10th. Yeah. So you're about 11 days away from being 102. Yeah, yeah. And the 37th Division still has a group and has a newsletter being published. Oh, yeah, yeah, they had that, uh, yeah. Out of Ohio. But that's all new guys. Yeah, that, all, yeah. They were from all over. They had troops were off, replacements come in from all over. So how long, you weren't in thinking you were going to be in for 12 months, and how long did you actually be in the service? I was 44 months and 14 days or 17 days. I, I, was, I can't remember on the day, but... The months I remember, 44 months, I, it was in there, yeah. So I was glad to get out of there. And was your mom and brothers and sisters happy to see you come home? Oh, were they yeah. surprised? Did they yeah. know you were coming, or was it a surprise? No, we hired, a, there's five of us hired a taxi at Fort uh, Indian Town, I mean, over here. Fort Devens? Fort Devens. And we got off by St. John's our Corner. We called where we were, we were going to stop in there. We stopped there. Mary was down there with her car, with the car. And Mary's your sister? Yeah. Uh -huh. She come down, my sister Mary come down with her car, picked me up and brought me home. All After that. you got back to Middletown, did they ever have parades? Did they ever march many parades? No. No, no, we didn't have it. This was an Ohio National Guard. We didn't have it. They weren't here. They had it. They had the stuff in Ohio. They had the parades and all that, and, and the monument and all. I, I sent them some money for that. Yeah. And you used to talk to your sergeant, right? No, what? Your sergeant. You used to talk to your sergeant every now. Oh and then? yeah, I talked to my sergeant. Then all of a sudden, what was his name? Edward Lucas. I talked to him, and all of a sudden, I couldn't get a hold of him. He must have. That he was in a hospital, but his sister wouldn't tell me what was wrong with him. Yeah, something happened to him. I wouldn't know what's wrong with him. Yeah. Well, we thank you very much for telling us your story. We appreciate it. I hope it's something there, but there's a lot more to was it. Was there anything that you want the younger generation to know? Do you want to tell them anything? Well, I said, yeah, I want to join the Army. If you want to get anything, you're better off in the Army instead of the other branch of service. 
Why is that? Why are they better off in the army rather than the other branches? Oh, uh, the other branch was all suicide. It was, uh, I call them Marines. Marines, that's a suicide crew. Oh. They're the ones make all the beachheads. But so they have the most dangerous because they're up front. They're the, yeah, they're the most dangerous outfit in. But that, that one island, the Army and the Marines went in there all at the same time. And Bougainville, they all went there at the same time to get in, in there to, to have that. Okay. Well, we thank you very much. And we've got all this wonderful information, and we're going to make sure that everybody hears your story. I hope so. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. What was your rank when you were in the service? I was I was a, I was a second cook. T T five I was. I, otherwise, I wouldn't be nothing. But I got the T five, being a second cook. Well, that's good. I, yeah, the last uh, the last seven months. Yeah. Well, this is a story from John Cerulek Sr., Middletown, Connecticut, yeah. rank of T5 in the U.S. Army during the South Pacific. Everything. We had no docks. Everything the ships were way out on the deep water. We had to go out and got barges. We had to load the barges, 50 tonners, 100 tonners. We had to work on you had to have a flashlight to work nights, and you had to bring the the barges in. You the the navy driver he couldn't see where he was going, but you was on top of the load, and you told told him how to go up with the flashlight this way or that way, and you know, get back in at night time. Yeah, yeah. It took a long time. Uh, I don't know what happened to Guadalcanal, but it turned out to be you got sick or got hurt, you went to Guadalcanal for treatment. They had the main hospital all in Guadalcanal. Okay, very good. Mm. Thank you for your story. Have a good day, John. I'll have a good day, yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah, I will see you. Yeah.